On the 25th day of October, Halloween gave to me 25 cotton candy cocoons, 24 space vampire snogging, 23 bloody canoes, 22 pool corpses, 21 groovy ashes, 20 Japanese giallos, 19 kung fu vampires, 18 haunted marches, 17 eternal lonelinesses, 16 cursed VHS tapes, 15 spectral snapshots, 14 mothers murdering, 13 prices bleeding, 12 models dying, 11 Betty's baking, 10 prices burning, 9 seagulls pecking, 8 scientists sneaking, 7 gold when shooting, 6 psychic scamming, 5 naked witches, 4 alien spelunking, 3 UFO abductions, two deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Well, we've almost got the introduction to a full minute. So let us waste no more time. Uh, welcome to the 25th day of our 31 days of uh, Halloween. Um, for those who have been listening on the regular, you know we are dividing uh, these uh, episodes into essentially three categories. There are movies I dearly love and want to talk about. There are movies that I haven't seen in a long time and want to go back and revisit. And then there are movies I've never seen. And this a uh, movie is the last of those. This is the last movie on the list of things that I've just never seen before. And you may wonder, how have you never seen Killer Clowns from Outer Space? And my <laughs> response to you is, I don't know. I don't know how I never saw it before. It, it always seemed a little too silly uh, for my taste. And I, I think my impression of it was it was almost like a Jim Wynorski movie or something. Like it was uh, in the same ballpark as an Evil Tunes or something like that. Where you just, you know, trot out an alcoholic David Carradine to pop up for two minutes in your movie to lend it an air of credibility. And then it's just a thinly veiled skin flick or something. Uh, but it, it turns out Killer Clowns is a lot more than that. This, this is... Uh, created by the uh, Chiodo brothers, Stephen Chiodo uh, and and uh, Charles Chiodo and Edward Chiodo, and they are known most for doing effects work. Like they did the creature design and the effects work for some of the Critters movies and Ernest Scared Stupid, and they did some stop motion work uh, for the movie Elf. And they did, uh, they were listed as puppet supervisors for uh, Team America World Police and so forth. And so, they, like, they cut their teeth on effects. And I think you can kind of tell that in this movie that the thing that really sets it apart from other films of, of its era of the, you know, mid to late 80s is the fact that the creature design is really good. Like, the, these killer clowns from outer space look really cool. Uh, so... It, it is a um, very silly movie, but in, in kind of the right way. So it, the premise of the film is that uh, killer clowns from outer space land and go on a rampage uh, murdering and kidnapping people uh, to eat them. And, the, you know, we have our plucky group of survivors that are... Uh, you know, the, tr trying to stand in that way. Uh, but, uh, you know, the thing that's kind of interesting is early on in the movie, you get a pretty good look at the killer clowns and you also get a look inside their spaceship and kind of understand what's up. Like, here, here is what the the movie's premise is. And uh, and the inside of the ship, like, the, the thing that uh, I like most about this movie, which I'll get to more in a minute, is, is a lot of the design stuff. But, um, you know, the movie trades on that. Like, that is what makes the movie great. And so, the, you know, the plot is pretty thin. It is really just, there are these killer clowns, and then, you know, you have a skeptical deputy, as played by John Vernon in the movie, uh, a.k.a. Dean Wormer from Animal House. And, you know, there's a little bit of a love triangle with, like, Mike and Dave and Debbie, uh, who are kind of the central characters. And that's fine. You know, it, it like, all of that stuff is just 
good enough. And, and which is, again, totally fine. That is not why we're here. That is not the point of this movie. Um, interestingly, that there is a young Chris Titus in, uh, showing up in this movie who would later on to be a reasonably well-known stand-up comic and podcaster and had his own show for a while and things like that. A, a guy that I've always strangely had an affinity for for no good reason. I don't know why I like Chris Titus, but I, I've always kind of liked him. Um, you know, he's probably done something horrible since I've paid attention. So, uh, if he has, you know, turned out to be a miserable human being, eh, just don't tell me about that. Um, or you probably should. So I don't go around saying like, you know, that Chris Titus has a pretty good head on his shoulders. So anyway, uh, yeah, the, the premise is pretty slight, but that again is totally fine within the context of the, of the movie. And what separates Killer Clowns from Outer Space from other movies of its ilk is the fact that the creature design is incredible. Um, all the, the stuff looks amazing. And um, more than that, uh, the it, it's just inventive and creative. And, you know, from shooting shotguns of popcorn that turns into little clown monsters to... Uh, you know, the, the colorful design of the ship and that everything. Like, at, I, at no point, I don't think, again, I've only seen it once at this point, I don't think at any point anyone ever asked the question, so why do they look like clowns and have clown stuff? Like, was this somehow stolen from something that they saw on Earth? Or is it just, this is a race of spacefaring clowns uh, and, and there doesn't seem to be a terrific reason for the design other than how silly it is but yeah so there's um you know the the shotgun and uh of popcorn there are uh guns that will spin you up into cotton candy where you are then deposited onto the ship to be like eaten or used for power later or something you know it's just bananas uh, you know, everything from shadow puppets on the wall eating, uh, passersby to the, honestly, one of my favorite things. And I think maybe the creepiest thing in the movie is the fact that you've got, uh, John Vernon at one point turned into a puppet, uh, for one of the clowns. Uh, and that is a really you know, kind of fitting in for him because he's kind of a, a dick character through the, the whole of the movie. But it is also unsettling. You know, it's just a thing that looks kind of gross. Um, and and the idea of having somebody using your body as a puppet is, uh, you know, not great. That is something that sticks in my craw. I don't like the idea that... I like that Dead Silence movie I don't care for much, but I, I, I like... Maybe I don't like it as much because I, I think it's got a great premise and just doesn't do enough with it. But, eh, what are you going to do? But we're talking about Killer Clowns. Uh, oh, also, Killer Clowns, great theme song. I wish more movies would invest in that kind of thing. Like, everything about Killer Clowns from Outer Space is leaning into its premise and I don't think the movie as a whole like I don't think the script is great I don't think the characters are necessarily great I don't think that there is anything to recommend the movie uh, you know based on its execution necessarily or, or in terms of like you know directorial flair and all that the thing that makes Killer Clowns from Outer Space totally worth watching is it's just a good time. It's fun. It's silly. Uh, like I said, it's it's kind of inventive. Um, you know, with uh, like the popcorn stuff turning into little clown snakes uh, is super fun. The, there's just so many weird little touches where the Chiodo brothers clearly just wanted to have a good time and kind of showcase their ability to do some interesting like effects work and character creation work and all the clowns look great and you know it's it's just super fun and i don't have a ton more to say about killer clowns from outer space actually this will probably be one of the shorter episodes it's just 
uh, you know, one of those movies, I'd never seen it before. Uh, I, I've got friends of mine that swear by it and really enjoy it. And I'm glad that I finally caught up to it because I did think it was uh, a terrific amount of fun. Um, I just don't know that it's, you know, is it a Stone Cold classic? Eh, maybe. You know, I wish I had seen it earlier. Like, I wish it was a movie I'd seen a couple of times when I was growing up and I think I'd have more fondness for it. Um, but I thought it was a, a really good time. And as far as Halloween viewing goes, I mean, Killer Clowns from Outer Space is a great Halloween movie because it's kind of weird and creepy, but it's not overly creepy. It's just kind of fun. And, you know, what more do you want from a Halloween film? Is something that you can throw in. Like, I wouldn't necessarily watch it with the kids. I mean, it's PG-13, so maybe. But, uh, you know, it, it's a little grim. But then again, I watch Poltergeist with the kids, so, you know, who am I uh, to, to make those kinds of claims? Uh, which, by the way, Poltergeist, uh, one of them, nah, didn't, didn't really care for it that much. The other one, scared the hell out of her. So, uh, I feel like my job is done. I feel like my, my work was uh, more than accomplished uh, in, in presenting that to the kids. So, um, okay, let's let's just leave it there. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, really fun. Glad I finally caught up to it. Uh, if you've never seen it before, definitely put it on your Halloween list. I think, it, you know, it's a couple of bucks on Amazon or something. Uh, you can probably find it. I think uh, one of those Plex services or something uh, has it for free. So you can probably watch it that way. Uh, and I don't think commercials would necessarily be the end of the world for this movie. Again, so much of this movie is dependent on the um, the effects work and the, the tone of the film being very... Uh, very silly and fun. I mean, the poster, um, the, the tagline for it on the poster is, it's crazy. So, you know, I think you know what you're getting with this movie. Um, hey, if you are listening to this, by the way, on the Dark Parade feed, I, uh, I, I invite you, I, I implore you to go over to the Legion Podcasts feed and uh, subscribe there uh, on the podcast catcher of your choice because... Uh, over there, there is uh, just a, a plethora of shows. Uh, a couple of other shows I do, Duncan and Bo Come Correct and Pick Six Movies, uh, I would uh, ask you to check out. But also, uh, plenty of shows that I've got nothing to do with, but that I think you would enjoy, like uh, Cinema Psyops and the Psycho Semanticast and Hail Ming uh, and uh, Hello, This is the Doom Show and uh, the Friday Nightmares and a number of the Butcher Shop uh, like a number of shows that you can check out and uh, have a wonderful time with so that will do it uh, for this time around uh, you know be sure you're subscribing to the podcast wherever you can get them uh, oh also you can go over to uh, legionpodcasts.com and you can find a post on this very show and uh, from there, you can subscribe to all the social media links and that kind of thing. If you want to drop me a line and let me know what you're thinking of the 31 Days of Halloween, we've had some conversations about some of these movies that I've really enjoyed. And uh, you can do that on the Discord server. That's where you'll find me uh, hanging out most of the time. Uh, so that'll do it for the 25th day of Halloween. Uh, we've got less than a week to go before our big finale. Uh, I picked a movie... For the, the final night for Halloween proper that uh, I, I feel very satisfied in having picked. And that's always a little bit of a, uh, an anxiety for me that I don't get the right movie uh, for Halloween. But I feel pretty good about this one. And I'm looking forward to rewatching it. I'm going to rewatch it here in, a, in about two days. And I'm very excited uh, to catch back up with it. But in between now and then... We got a ton of other movies uh, to talk about. We're going to do like, sort of a mini run of movies. Uh, the last four days of the month are all going to be kind of a mini theme. Uh, but between now and then, we got a couple of other movies uh, to check out. So uh, come back tomorrow for another episode of the uh, 31 Days of Halloween. Be spooky out there. And uh, I will see you then. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm.